Yo, what's up? Everyday MMA episode three with Jay Pree. After sparring, nope. after sparring episode, Jay Pree, introduce yourself. My name is Jacob. They call me Jay Pree. And yeah. Yeah, where are so, you from? Where are you from? So, basically, NYC. I mean, I'm from New York, but I was born in New York. So, all right, so let me explain this. Yeah, yeah. This is the Bronx right here. This is how I explain it every time. I don't know why, but I like it. The Bronx, because the Bronx looks like this on the map. So this is where it is. I was born right here. This is New Rochelle. It's right above it. And then I grew up in Mount Vernon, which is right here. So it's right next to it. It's to the left. And what did you, what did you say about I, Mount Vernon? What was that like? Oh, that's like it's like a city area. But don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, so no, 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 talk about that. I moved from there when I was like twelve to White Plains, which is a little bit north. And that's where I'm basically. I basically lived like my high school and like middle school years and like have a lot of my friends there in White Plains. Mm. And then... What's White Plains like? That's a little better? Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice area. Okay. Is it like Orange County at all? Orange County is nicer. Nice. But <laughs> just white, different? Yeah, it's just different. But it's definitely nice. Mm. You could move there. I never, nice. I've never been out to that, uh, that side of the U.S. As far as I've gotten is like Texas. Texas. That's crazy. I've never been to Texas. It's all right. I see I have because I had a connecting flight. I used to do all these <laughs> to touch down? Yeah. I used to have all these connecting flights everywhere in the whole America. Why? Because when you're poor, you got to take connecting flights. No, no, that's not. <laughs> so where were like, you going? Is what I'm saying. Like, oh, just going back to? to New York. Oh, from Cali to New York? Yeah. How many times did you do that? Uh, when you're poor, <laughs> you got to take connecting flights. So, all right. Yeah, that's what happens. But, that's uh, cool. yeah. And then I moved from White Plains. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> I went from White Plains to Queens to live with my pops. And like, I don't remember when I graduated high school and I lived there for a while. And then after like COVID hit, I moved out to Cali, Orange County. 2020? 2020. And then I was just getting my license and just chilling for a while. I was like, what should I really do? Mm. I was thinking about training MMA and then I didn't really do it until the end of 2021. And then I went to Subfighter in September, so yeah. I've been here ever since. Uh, you just competed this weekend mm -hmm. on Saturday, right? Yes, yes sir. And uh, it was how many rounds? It was only two. Two rounds yeah. at so the Point Muay Thai Smoker? Yeah. Uh, how'd that go? Um, I think I, I went against a taller guy who was like similar to your height. Maybe a little shorter, maybe like an inch shorter. I'm 6'2". Yeah. So, yeah. Um, how tall are you? I'm probably 5'9". Five 5'9", nine. Five nine is it's a big... Big difference. Yeah, yeah. Big, I have the video too. I'll try and put it up. Here. Yeah. So, um, I'll get a smoker. Yeah, he stood on the outside a lot and used his kicks. They weren't really powerful kicks. They were just like to get points, like the teeps. He used a lot of teeps. I think that's what got him ahead of me. His, his teeps were pretty good and they were keeping me at distance. So, yeah, he played on the outside a lot. Yeah, and I think that's where I felt short is that I needed to get on the inside and just throw more combinations. Well, and also, like, yeah, score it different. Yeah. Kickboxing score it different than, or Muay Thai score it different than like MMA. Whereas like you were punching more, I saw you punching more and pressuring more than he was, but he yeah. was like catching points on the, on the outside. outside yeah. yeah, so it's a game, man. It's a game. Like sometimes the, it, it's a little bit frustrating to watch someone like pressure him the whole time, put it on them and like march them down, like yeah. initiating the fight and then lose. It's kind of a weird thing because you weren't really getting hit too much no. but you would get touched with these little kicks so yeah. i mean respect to the opponent for using his length and all that i'm not, not discrediting that but it's a weird thing to watch why do you do all this um we talked i know you and i talked yeah, about this so private I'm, about like <laughs> it's hard it's hard to my whole mentality you yeah you know all right, no, but you gotta tell <laughs> i gotta say it again all right so uh, i just feel like dedication is really the most important thing like the only thing that really matters, to, to be to honest. To sport or to anything? To anything. anything. Just being dedicated to like just having a purpose and like your family and like your friends is everything. You just gotta have to be dedicated to everything. What happens when you're not dedicated? And your life falls apart. Hmm. I think that's what happens. I don't know anybody. I look at all the successful people and they're all dedicated to something. Hmm. So I'm just, I just thought like something really cool to dedicate myself to, and I was like, MMA is pretty cool. Yeah, has a lot of benefits, so I'm gonna try it out. And now I just do it every day. A lot of every day, MMA. A lot yeah, of life MMA. lessons, dude. A lot yeah. of life lessons, and in, in fighting, you know what I mean? Like yeah. perseverance, discipline, uh, uh, you know, 
And I thought it was too much. I blanked it, but hey, fair enough. We just farts. My head's not working straight. Yeah. Plus, I ain't sleeping that good. It's just not my, come on, man. Just, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I hope not. Uh, no, but there's a lot you can get out of the sport, you know? It's cool. And we got a cool community here. That guy's about to fight. Shout out to Chase. Chase McCormick. Out of frame. Yeah, that's him talking. That's us. He doesn't care about us. It's crazy. I want to keep moving. What are you at? 42. Oh, 42. About to weigh in on uh, Friday. Beast mode. Beast mode. So, yeah, okay. Dedication uh, to MMA or in life. You feel like you're doing it? You feel like you, you, your life's coming together because of that? Yeah. Yeah. I think as long as you're making progress every day towards uh, your dedication, then that's all you can do. That's all you have control over, really. People, I think people spend a lot of time sometimes on things you have no control over. Mm. And that's when your life starts messing up or falling apart. How old are you? 20. 20. Might have turned 21. Man. Yeah. I, I wish I would have known that when I was 20. <laughs> but for real. I, knew, yeah. I know a lot of friends of mine now that don't probably know that yet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. And that's what I was thinking before I even started training. Like, that's what I figured out. So it's been a while now. It's, when it's did you start thinking like that? Like when I was 19, yeah. when I started mm -hmm. training. So yeah. All right. It's been and a then, while. I had that mentality. And before that, what were you up to? I was just trying to figure out, like, I was lost. I feel like everybody is lost. I mean, everybody figures it out at their own pace. I don't blame them, but everybody's lost at some point in their life, and they're trying to figure out, like, what's the point of life or something like that. They're trying to figure out something, and that's what I figured out. That's my, like, philosophy that I feel like. Well, I love that. I think, I think it's, yeah. no, I think that's cool because I think I, even if it's not MMA, right? You do whatever you do. It works for like everything. Anything. Yeah. But I see a lot of people commit themselves to the gym, not even for a grip, but just to like find some focus and discipline. And then it translated into their life. Like their, their business took off or their relationships got better or, you know, they're better with their kid, whatever it is. Like, you know, better father, better husband, better friend, better brother, whatever, better son, daughter. I think it like translates when you dedicate yourself to something, when you work towards something, when you progress in somewhere, like you're saying, it uh, it translates to your life. Yeah. That's rad. Yes, I agree. Well, I'm yeah. just like a thinker. I feel like everybody is different. Some people are like doers, and now I'm a doer, because so, I just come here and just do. Mm -hmm. But I feel like everybody, it's not like, everybody is a certain type of way, and it's not like bad to be the way you are. Like sometimes people think, I think too much, or maybe I just do too much and I don't think enough, like about my actions. And shit. Like maybe oh, I'm cracking up right now. My wife and I just had this conversation this yeah. morning. She's a thinker. Yeah, I'm a doer. Yeah, but I do too much. You gotta have a balance. And then she overthinks it, so she comes in. She goes, "Yo, you're doing too much." And I'm like, "Well, you're thinking too much." And they like, "But we, yeah, like you said balance. It's, it's cool. Like yeah. we kind of rein each other in a little bit." But that's it's funny because you're saying people are different, and I can see yeah. that with my wife and I. Exactly. I think I kind of find that I found that balance like within myself. I'm like, all right. How do you do that? How did someone like go from like I'm an overthinker or I'm an overdoer to gotta, like balance? You just gotta be real with yourself and just recognize like everything, even the things that you don't like about yourself. Like just be like, yeah, I, I do too much, I, or I think too much. Like I already recognize that I think too much sometimes. So I'm just like, all right, let me just stop thinking and just start doing something, even if it's the wrong thing. I'm moving in a certain direction and I'm not thinking as much as I was before. I think a lot of people are afraid to look inward. Yeah. And be honest with themselves, and and when they do it, it's usually really defensive. Like you're like, especially if someone else says it. Like if someone comes to you and you're like, yeah. "Hey, you're a thinker," you're like, "No, I'm not." Like you know, you're like, "It's like now I'll be doing it." It's a knee jerk yeah. reaction. It's like, "No, I'm not." You know? Yeah. Um, and to be able to like call yourself out, power line. To be able to do that at 19 is ridiculous. And then to be able to execute it on it for the last what is it, two years, man? A year and a half. A year. A year and like a month. Year and a month, that's it? Yeah. Man, I feel like you've been here forever. <laughs> um, for your, and just to put more perspective, we, we're at pro practice right now, 12.30 to about 2. And uh, he'll be back here tonight from like 6 to 8. It used to be 6 to 9. Now we do two hours a night just to make it a little bit easier. Everybody's from 6 to 8. Um, and he's every day, almost, Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, he's far. So, and Saturday, you would be with us Saturday too? Um, I usually just do my homework. Yeah, uh, if I have something to do, I'll do that. Just doing like miscellaneous uh, stuff. Um, what are you studying in school? Finance. Finance. Yeah. Trying to just to set yourself up to be yeah, successful. To be financial. Yeah, finance would be good. I think you mentioned Sugar Sean O'Malley to me before, yeah. and I was watching that uh, countdown to UFC, and he's talking about how. Yeah, I just watched that. Yeah, it's kind of cool, man. Like last night. 
Think about him however you want to think about him, but he manages his own career. Yeah. He manages his own Twitch account or whatever he does. You do that too, right? Yeah. And he manages yeah. his like own, uh, pretty much his own career all the way through. And he's very successful. He's bought a house. He's taking care of his family. You know what I mean? Like, he's got a little freaking Lambo. I don't know if that's responsible or whatever, yeah, that's but he, he, he could do it. Um, but that's a guy who kind of like took the reins of his life and made it successful. And I, I could see like, you're a young man. He's a young guy too. I don't know yeah. how he is, but I could see like that ambition of like, I'm going to learn finance. I'm going to learn a craft. I'm going to give my life to you. I'm going to devote myself to this stuff. Yeah. Like I got a lot of respect for that. So it's like everything I always try to monetize. I just have like, so it's like I can never do anything. And I'm like, dang, how is this making me better? That's how I just think now. That's like my whole mentality. Like, if, it, if it don't make dollars, then it don't make sense. It don't make sense. So like everything I do is like monetization. It's like very I watch YouTube. That's the only thing I do that doesn't make money. You think you'll start a YouTube? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm t- I mean, like, even this is like a little bit of a, cra- like, I'm just playing with it. You know what I mean? I see yeah. people on YouTube and doing whatever. Like, I think we all got some real interesting stories. I think that everyone in this gym, I could interview everyone all day, every day for the rest of the years I got. I think you still find interesting people. You know, I've got a 19 year old, sorry, 20 year old kid. He started when he was 19 and he's spitting out mad facts. Also, mad facts. teaches me the lingo, so I know I know <laughs> about this stuff. Facts. Facts. Uh, you know what I mean? So you, you, you have, we have all these people from, Kids to uh, to you know senior citizens training on the mats. Yeah. I think we all got a story to tell. I think we all got knowledge to drop. So, yeah. Yeah. so hey JP, what else do you gotta say, brother? I just wanted to say to do MMA. I feel like you have to be like a, have a very strong character, like characteristics. Mm. Like you just have to be a different type of person. What do you mean by that? Like everybody, you just gotta be drawn to it for your own certain reason. Like me, the dedication. Like you, you said. You didn't want to feel like you didn't want to get bullied anymore and put you on the spot. No, for real. Hey, yeah, I told you. <laughs> so everybody has their own reason. You just got to be like, I don't know, interesting, man. Interesting person. Yeah, I think, you know, like I said, my first time I told him about, um, you know, I was beat up a lot. I felt weak a lot. I, uh, I was uh, not confident at all in my abilities to defend myself. Um, and MMA was like a, a way to figure out to find my strength in this. I talked a little bit about this before, but yeah, it was my journey to that was more through like struggle. I feel like a lot of us get there that way. You're in a unique position where it was almost more like intellectual. Yeah, like, you, yeah. you kind of like manifested it differently. Yeah, it wasn't out of like, damn, I feel like, I'm not like the biggest person, but I didn't feel weak. Like I wasn't getting bullied really. It was just, I wanted to dedicate myself to something. And I just saw MMA have like, have like all the benefits, you know, physical, mental, yeah, physical and mental, just like the, the mental dedication and then physically you're just making yourself tougher than you ever were before and just better. Yeah, I think uh, Adam said a long time ago, he's like, you don't fight for money, you don't fight for uh, for other people, you don't really fight for anything, like if you're going to fight, it's because something inside you is uh, needs to fight. And I mean, I could not agree with that more. Because if you really look at the at the the money they're making, you know, I pay I pay almost as much every year to compete that I make. Hey, you know, I'm making a few grand, maybe. And that's a sad fact. I'm 33, I've been doing it for over 10 years, and I'm still making very little money. So that's that's the reality for a lot of these guys out here. Now, that's not why I do it. I make money training people, I make money working, you know, and that's that's how I take care of my family. I fight on a very personal level. I fight to like because there's a need inside me to go do that. And I feel like people are in this gym. Yeah, they got that need. Whether it's you know from whatever you came from, I don't know. You know, it could be whatever. But you got yours. Like you have a need to compete. This guy's yeah. competing more than most people in the gym. You know, he's out there. You done grappling matches? Yeah, some grappling. He's done. He's done at least two or three. Three, three smokers. Three smokers for the Muay Thai. He's sparring yeah. consistently, training consistently. Um, you just don't find that that often. You just don't. There's another guy, Chase Whitmer, who showed up five years ago, wherever it was. And and uh, never left. Now he's a beast. Now he's an absolute killer, stud, 35 or undefeated pro, about to fight October 22nd, and uh, it's gonna be a show, man. But my whole reason I'm saying that is because you gotta give these guys props. I'm not saying like you gotta be a fighter or anything like that, but when you recognize people who do dedicate themselves to whatever their craft may be, like maybe you like knitting and you're a hardcore knitter every day, you know, respect. Uh, But you know, you got a real passion, you got a real dedication. 
Yeah. And, I feel like uh, you don't have to force yourself. Yeah, I don't try to for- be like one of those people that force an MMA yeah, or anything. Yeah, that's just like, social. find your dedication, you know? You saying like you don't push on anybody? Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, whatever you think is cool or you think you could dedicate yourself to and find a purpose in, you should just do that. That's how I feel. I don't think like, all right, you should do MMA, just do MMA. Like, I say that as a joke sometimes to my friends in New York. Like, yo, just do MMA. But, like, nah, like, you should really just dedicate yourself to whatever you feel like can give you purpose. You ever hear of uh, like Alex Honnold? He's no. a rock climber. No. Like, I think the rock climber reels a lot now. I don't yeah. know why. Well, I've I think some cool movies. Uh, you should watch. It's called Free Solo. And the reason I say you should watch it, it says nothing from MMA. But you like watch these guys who are passionate. Like this dude's whole life is about climbing a freaking rock. Yeah. That's it. Like he just wants to climb more rocks better than other people climb that rock. Yeah. And there's like. I don't know how he makes money, but he obviously makes some money. I'm in the rocks. Like he lives in a van. Now he's got a house, he's got his girl, whatever. But you watch the passion. You know what I mean? That's what I'm that's what I'm drawn to. I'm not drawn to nothing. I don't care if it's basketball, football, baseball, MMA, whatever. If you're and obviously passionate, some of them bring you more money than others. For sure. I try not to think about that. Yeah, I wish I was a baseball player or a football player or something. I'd be making bad money. I also too small for the sport, but whatever. Um yeah, it's not about the money. It's about and when you talk, when you hear him talk like Kobe, like you watch some stuff about Kobe, like that dude was a crazy, dedicated, disciplined dude, and had his faults and all that. No one, no one's perfect, but it's the passion that's the draw. You know what I mean? When you find that, that's what that's what you gotta respect. Like when I see Chase shadow boxing extra rounds, doing whatever, you know, hitting the bags until till everyone leaves. Like it's his passion for it. When I see you showing up every day, it's the passion for it that draws me into want to talk to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta respect, like you said. Like I think everyone has it. You just gotta find what, what pulls that out of you. Because I feel like sometimes people just can't find it because they because they think too much. They're like they make it too complicated. You just gotta be like, all right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this and just do it. Mm-hmm. You can't be like, dang. Because some people try to pretend like they like so many things. Like obviously right. everybody likes so many things, but you gotta just choose something. You can't just be like, all right, I like everything, so I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. I like, no whatever, sense. I like whatever you guys like. I like whatever. Yeah, like, I just like what everybody else likes. Yeah. You can't just do that for real. No, it's true, man. But it's, you know, it's hard. I talk to people who are, like, passionate about whatever. Like, so maybe it's music. And then they're like, yeah. well, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I don't know. It's like. You just got to start somewhere. Take, a, do, take a YouTube something. class. I don't know. They got free stuff online all day. Or pay for a tutorial, you know? When I started making beats, I had an app on my phone. It's free. It's called Oxen. I still use it. So it's free. You just download it. Start making beats. If you don't like it, then stop doing it. Yeah, I might, start to do. I might start making those beats. Dedicate myself. I'm going to take a whole other route. Yeah, just, just reinvent yourself. Just start making beats. Beats by Mike. Go. <laughs> Yo, sorry, like, Dre. Oh. Um, no, that's that's beautiful, man. And so like, what else like about MMA in particular? You know, see, see there's a guy out there. He's a young man. Actually, I get hit up by older dudes, too. Like, well, was it too late to start or whatever? Like, what would you tell them? Yes. Nah, I was like, <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't do it. It's over. It's nah, too old. Like, you can start with numbers. As long as your body is willing and you don't feel like it's going to be detrimental to yourself, you're not hurting anybody. If the burden's all on you, I think you should be able to do anything. Yeah. That's really how I feel. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. That's how I feel. No, say what you're saying. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes like, I live with a, a couple of family members. So when I feel like the burden gets on them, because I got to use a, the car, we only have it. You have one car, right? I feel, so I'm exposing myself right now. But uh, we got one car. So sometimes I got to take it, and then I don't realize, like, they have something to do, and then it messes up their thing. So then sometimes that makes me, like, puts me in a bad mood. I'm like, dang, I want everybody to be able to do what they want. Not for sure. But, like, I don't know. Sometimes then I just call a list if I have enough time. No, you so call one of us, dude. We pick you up. I know. I don't want to put the burden on other people. That's what I'm saying. That's the main point. I understand but sometimes that. it's good to get help. Yes. I, gotta, I realized that. Yo, I had a very similar conversation with my wife. We have a newborn at home. Um, I have a two and a half year old and I have a newborn at home. And if I leave, she's got two kids. She's, she's, she's watching. You know what I mean? That can be very harsh. But there's times where I'm like, yo, I got to go punch him in the face. Otherwise, I'm going to go crazy, you know? And, and or, kick that's the, or, kick, or kick him in the face. Or kick him in the face. Sorry, get back. Uh, you gotta Swiss kick somebody in the face. Yo, yo. and then uh, it was one, it was an accident. And 
that support, you know, it's, it's, yeah, she might take on a little bit more, but she pushed me at the door, like, yo, you yeah. gotta go do what you gotta do. And I'm sure your family feels I the mean, same. I mean, it's also semi her responsibility, though, right? Like, what she, the, what's that? Like, she had the kids, so it's no, like, no, no, but it's not like, even like that. Yeah, yeah, no right. Offense, like, no, no, no. But, like, imagine, like, we all gotta do what we gotta do. Like, what if she wanted to do something? Just shit is on your way. This motherfucker. Hey, hey, baby, baby, don't hurt this kid, okay? He's young, he doesn't know anything. Oh. Now my point, my point is that the support of the family, it's like a good tribe. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you got, I'll take on some things. If she needs to go do something, yeah. I'll take the key. I'll take it on, you know? Hey, me and my family are working on that. Very cool. Like, like, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. But that's also what I'm saying with the with the gym. Like, you you, you could call us. Yeah, I can. You know? Stop Sometimes putting it on anyone else. You put it on us. I've been calling them Bill and, and Mark. Yeah. I just call Chase. I call Chase all the time. Sometimes Adam drops me off the, the other one. Oh, Adam. Uh, uh, hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah so on. they help me out. Shout out to them. Shout out to Adam and the Beal, King of Beal. Chase helps me out too. Chase, Chase. Shout out everybody. Samurai Whitmer. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's Shout that's cool. Everybody. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's like you make the sacrifices to do what you love, right? Yes. That's the dedication part, and sometimes that burden falls on other people, and you know, you try to mitigate that as much as you can, but whatever, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta and do. And it's my wife's fault somehow for having kids. Is that what you said something like that. Yeah, it's your wife's fault. For having kids. <laughs> <laughs> Just Why does he have the kids? Well, you're going to get hurt, dude. <laughs> My life's a savage. <laughs> Keep training. Find something to dedicate, dedicate yourself to. Get your life together. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to close it out then? Um, I feel like we covered a lot. I don't know. If you're ever having doubts, just know that everybody has doubts. That's something I had to learn. And just keep staying dedicated. And just, yeah, you'll be good. You'll be all right. Wow. Fucking, that's it, dude. That's perfect. Yeah. End it right there, yeah. Thank you, Jay Pri. So far, I'm very motivational. Chase Whitmer, up next, <laughs> October 22nd, A1 Combat, <laughs> Ryan Favors at Commerce Casino. Let's Buy go. your tickets. <laughs> uh, dope. That was dope, Jay Pri. You killed it. Why am I so motivational? Why